Well, Good right. evening, everybody. Welcome to Vapor Trials TV on Monday. Um, I'm hosting it for a change. <laughs> uh, right, this is this studio is probably about three quarters built, I'd say. But it's uh, if you're hearing this, it's clearly working well enough. We've got quite a bit to get through tonight. We've got some reports, some video from the COP7 uh, FCTC sessions that are going on in Delhi in India. We've got a review of the Tesla Touch 150. Uh, and I'll be joined by Dave Dawn and by Marco. But first, the titles. That was a bit of a mad rush while the titles were playing, but I, I made it back just about. Right, okay. Uh, I think Marco's in shot at the moment. So, Marco, say hello. 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 And if Dave says hello, then he'll be in shot, because that's like well, magic. I, is that how it works? That, well, who knew? Just, Good evening, everybody. How is everyone? I hope everyone is well and stuff like that. That's always good. Always good. Yes. Pack night. The night, Dave. Pack night. There's a hell of a lot to fit in, isn't there? There really is a lot to fit in. I can There's count a lot it. going on. There is an awful lot going on. There is an awful lot going on. I, do you know what? I think, I think because we've got lots of video to get through as well, uh, including some... I've got a feeling that we might be the only press that's got footage of the COP7 thing. I, well, there's, there's another lot out there called Rebel Media. I stand corrected. I, the, the young lady. Two young ladies. Two young Oh, I saw the one, the, the presenter. One's very blonde and the other one's not quite as blonde. And um, seriously, these girls aren't pulling any punches out there. They, they don't really don't. Tend, they're not the sit-on-the-fence kind, are they? <laughs> no, no. No. They've, they've, been, they've been that, that far from effing and blind in the pair of them. And you can see the frustration in their eyes. Rebel.media, look it up. It's worthwhile yeah. watching them. They're on the street, on the floor. We, we are very fortunate to have a roving reporter out there in the person of one Dick Puddlecourt. Now, if Dick, if you're watching, and if anybody over there is watching, I, I all three of us, but I'm going to see it, I really want to say a big thank you for, for you doing what you've done. He shot four videos. Um, he didn't have to do this. He's done it for VT TV and for you lot sitting out there watching. We literally brought this down to the wire. How close were you, Dave? <laughs> About 10 uh, minutes I, ago. I heard you say sort of three minutes to go or something as I was just loading the last of the videos into... Uh, so um, <laughs> I haven't actually heard or seen them yet, so I hope he hasn't said any naughty words or anything. Well, I don't think Dick will have. He's, he's, it, uh, I've, I've skimmed them, I've skimmed them, and it's going to be interesting. But yes, we've got footage from COP7, which, again, Dick, thank you so much. He didn't have to do it. He's done it. He's done it for you and for VTTV, and that makes me a very, very happy man. Uh, and I'm sure I'm speaking for, for Mark Orr and Dave. And Sav, who's in chat as well? Hell yes, absolutely. Hello, Sav. So, so in about a minute's time, we'll get a reply to that. Okay, right. So, so we've got all that stuff to come up. But should we talk about this local council business first? Oh my God, yes. Um, right. Okay. So I saw a headline tweeted from the New Nicotine Alliance website. That's what sort of made me latch onto it yesterday, last night, I think it was, wasn't it? Mm. And uh, and I posted that link into our Skype chat. Um, the headline seems to suggest that. All of the English councils have decided to ban vaping on their premises. Is that right? Have I got that right? 
it, it's kind of along those lines. What what councils are generally, um, what's the word? Laggy. Laggy. Laggy is not the right word. They've got extreme latency. So if an idea comes along, it'll come along in, let's say, January 2012, and it might get implemented by January 2018. They tend to take their time over all kinds of things. And what's happened, basically, is... Um, some freedom of information requests have gone in from TFA and they've asked basically what is the policy about vaping on council premises, council property, council land and stuff like that. And only one borough, and that's Enfield in London, has said we're fine with people vaping at their desks, we don't have a policy on it and neither should we. But some of the replies that have come back from these various different councils are enough to make your toes curl because almost to a man or woman, person, entity, they have said, um, we're going to treat it the same as smoking because it's easier. That's the bulk of them. Right. Then you've got the ones you've got the ones that are saying, well, actually, these things, these e-cig things that they're using. Uh, look exactly like cigarettes, and that's going to cause confusion for enforcement. So we are lumping them in with smoke-free legislation, just as a matter of course, because people will get that really sounds, confused. That sounds a bit like where we were with the majority of public health like two, three years ago. <laughs> four years ago, four, David. It's four. Yeah, it could be, it could be. It, it's it's forever ago when what we were getting out of the public health folks that were opposed was, well, it looks as though you're smoking and we can't tell the difference. And the argument then, I mean, think back, Dave, if you can't, can you remember that first squonker that you got and reviewed and it ended up causing problems for the manufacturer? Oh, Dave's devices. Yes. It wasn't called a squonker then, was it? It was a bottom feeder. Yes. Yeah, I remember um, it. Well, which, I still got it. <laughs> it it, it, uh, it adequately, adequately describes a lot of the people that are enacting this idiocy in the councils, <laughs> bottom feeders. But the, the, how long ago is that? Because that's when box mods, I mean, Gary Dibley was making Brazilians of them at the time. How long ago? I'm not sure you want to know this, but we're talking close to six years ago. We are. So six years ago, we were having this argument and going... Does that look like a Benson and Hedges to you? Because it bloody doesn't to me. But there are some that are rolling that out. Then we get some, and I suppose I ought to put this right at the end, but we will come back to it. There are some councils that have said the World Health Organization is telling us that these things could be very dangerous. <coughs> and therefore, we're treating them exactly the same as cigarettes because there is no difference between them. They're as dangerous as smoking. Um, but mostly it's it's laziness. Mostly it's, look, we're, we're just lumping it in with fags for the time being. Although what Jim McManus was saying in his piece that got published today on his blog was that they're not necessarily lazy. They just have an awful lot of hoops to jump through and they can't just react to, for instance, the Public Health England pronouncements or the RCP pronouncements or anything else. They can't just react like that. It all takes time. It's funny, though, isn't it, how they can react to something like, um, just to pick an instance, vicious dogs. You remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Something, something in the newspapers, and within a fortnight, there are council operatives going out, rounding up these so-called vicious dogs. And they'll react to anything like that, but they can't react when they have to unban something anywhere near as quickly. They've got to drag their feet and take their time. It's it's craziness. And I'm, I'm fully expecting the chat's going completely apeshit about now. Yeah, I'm just uh, sort of uh, trying to track what's going on in chat, to be quite honest with you. Uh, there's one comment there about enforcement officers should sue the councils for implying that they're as thick as pig shit. <laughs> And, uh, and that's yes. kind of hard to argue with. What else we going there? Yes, Paul Barnes in chat says, uh, laziness, ineptitude and incompetence. Yeah. Well, well, 
you know, you, I, you can't rule it out, can you? I mean, it, it's, nope. The, if we've been talking about this for six years and these things have been around for ten years now, then um, you know they're a little bit late learning if they if they really truly are incompetent at this stage about these things. Unless, of course, you think they're just generally incompetent, <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, uh, uh, to be to be fair, I suspect that the more in, I'm, I was going to call them more enlightened. That's not really what I mean. The ones that are possibly thinking a little bit more about this may be awaiting May the 20th coming round such that they know exactly what the situation is with regard to any legislation or any further legislation that might be added to TRPR. Um, if they are waiting for the government, though, to say something along the lines of, well, actually, we're going to be banning vape and everywhere, they're going to be waiting for an awful long time because that's not going to happen. Um, that I think you're very do. charitable if you think there's a strategy like that. I, I, I'm, I'm, tr I'm practicing this noble art of being the better man, dear. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be charitable in absolutely everything, in order to avoid calling people who might really believe in what they are doing, fucking twats. I, I'm trying not to do that as far as I can. If you follow me, drift. So, I mean, it's possible that they're doing that. But the bottom line on it is, look, it would be very, very easy for any council to sit down in a council meeting, pass a resolution to say Public Health England has informed us that e-cigs are, at the very worst, 5% of the risk of smoking. They're not renormalising smoking. Smoking is continuing to drop in both adult and child populations. Initiation of nicotine use is at an all-time low. Um, all of this appears to be due to e-cigs and therefore... We, as a council, really need to stop banning it and start doing what Public Health England suggests we do, which is promoting it. Now, I happen to know that VIP has a bit of a campaign going on about this, and I notice that Blaze, Liam, is in chat. Liam, I'm going to ask you to do me a favour. I, I know there is a link, I just don't have it handy. Could you get it to Sav uh, and she can post it up on the chat for us, please? so that everybody can go and find out what to do. We need to be talking to our councillors, in other words, and making our thoughts plain on all of this. Don't we, Dave? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, to be honest with you, we'll probably have more of an impact with councillors than you did with MPs, to be quite honest with you. Because you, you can, I mean, let's face it, councillors, most of them are semi-retired and just want an easy life, don't they? But a uh, question, because you've obviously read this a little bit more than I have. <laughs> um, uh, is the intention then, if they're saying, like, you know, you can't smoke uh, at your desk or whatever, is their intention to make vapours go out with the smokers in the silly little shelters in the cold? Or, or is there that they're not got that so far yet? Ah, there are, there are various different things happening in different councils. Some have said that they think it's really not a good idea to chuck the vapours out with the smokers. Therefore, they have made either separate arrangements or they've told the vapours that they can vape outside, they don't have to go to the smoking shelters. As long as they are, get this, more than six <laughs> feet away from an open door or a window um, and out of the public gaze, some have said it's all right to vape when you're in mufti, but not on council property, not when you're in council uniform, not when you're in a council vehicle, not when you're anywhere near council property. And others have said if you want to vape, you've got to go to the smoking shelter with the smokers. Now, those are the ones that I think it was the Daily Mirror said were acting illegally. Um, that might be a bit of a stretch, but there could be well, actually... You know, a some lawyer would fancy his chances with that, wouldn't he? Uh, I, I oh, mean, I, I, I think that smoking shelters are a stupid idea, right? I, I genuinely do. Um, but let, let's just take let's just take the party line, right? The reason that, that the smokers have been ostracised, uh, rounded up and chucked out into a, uh, a three-sided shed in the rain is because it's what they're doing is supposed to be harmful, right? 
I mean, I don't subscribe to that, but but that's the party line. That's if that's why the the the, the ban, the, the the indoor smoking ban came in. You know, um, they can't then shove vapors in with them, can they? Isn't that a contradiction in their policy? Well, it's a contradiction in Public Health England's policy, and that is endorsed by the Department of Health. The idea being. If we are to believe what we are told, second-hand smoke is almost as dangerous as first-hand. Like you, that's what I told, that's not what I believe. But if that is the case, then forcing someone who no longer smokes but could be tempted into that area, one, exposes them unwillingly to the cigarette smoke that the legislation is supposed to protect them from, that's the first thing. And secondly, it's likely to undermine any what Robert West would call a quit attempt. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I've really got to grit my teeth to say these things. <laughs> I know where it, you're it, coming from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I mean, do. Look, the bottom, I do. Line on, the bo bottom line on it is, for me personally, on my own, I don't give a toss. It does, just doesn't bother me. It never has and it never will. But... If I was feeling bolshy and fancied a few days in court, then bloody hell yes, I'd be bringing a case. Because by everything that we've been told by Ash, by the government, by CRUK, by RCP, by Public Health England, by all of these people, they didn't ought to be doing that. They shouldn't be doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's like, it's, it's like sending a man with no protective clothing on into a building to pull asbestos out. That's a, a pretty good parallel of what they're doing. It is. And the more I think about it, there's, there's, there's the health impact. They're, they're, there's a contradiction in what they're doing there. Um, you, you know, the dangers of secondhand smoking, blah, 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 all of that crap. But also all of the other little arguments that they've thrown against smoking and, and, and vaping to an extent as well, about normalisation and all that kind of stuff as well. They're all valid, aren't they? Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. I'm sorry, I, I just got a little bit distracted by chat there, Dave. That's all right. Um, because there's, there's bits and bobs coming up. One, right, Leanna Lawless, let me set you right on what the legislation on smoking shelters is. They may not have more than 50% coverage, i.e. walls, 50% walls, but that doesn't mean only two walls. They can have four, as long as there's not more than 50% coverage around the periphery of the roof. However... If those four walls are each a foot away on the outside of the periphery of the roof, they can be 100% because they're not part of the structure legally. Trust me, I got away with that for five years at my studio because that's how I built mine. Um, and there's also been another point made, that, and, and Simon Clark's right on this one, by building two separate areas for vapors and smokers, it further ostracizes smokers and further stigmatizes smokers. And as a smoker that doesn't smoke, that's me, um, I don't like that idea at all. I don't like ostracization of any part of the community if it can be avoided, especially not for a lifestyle choice. That's just ridiculous. I just feel proud that we live in a country that can, like, sort of come up with such a detailed, <laughs> a well-engineered solution to a problem that didn't really exist. Uh, I'm just going to change the topic just for a second here. There's a couple of comments I'm just picking up in chat about people trying to find the stream tonight. Yeah, we're having a bit of a bust up with YouTube. So this is actually live streaming through a second account. Uh, so if you're watching it live through uh, the Vapor Trials TV website, you won't notice any difference. It's fine. If you're in the habit of going to the YouTube stream, then you won't be hearing what I'm saying now. So if you're advising people where to find it, the website's the best place for tonight. Uh, at the end of the show, we'll download it and put it where it belongs on the proper site. And YouTube has told us that everything should be working again tomorrow. So something went wrong somewhere and the uh, the operative that we were talking to via email didn't seem to know what. <laughs> but he said, but it'll be all right tomorrow, didn't he, Dave? So, yes, yes, that's exactly right. So, uh, um, but yeah, yeah, look, I mean, the, the whole thing about the smoke and shelter malarkey, that, it doesn't really 
how it's constructed and what the rules are really don't matter. They shouldn't bloody be there in the first place, I don't believe. And certainly vapors should not be forced outside uh, in order to vape because the science tells us it's not going to do anybody any harm. So as I say, VIP website, um, there is a campaign going on. There are links off to write to them, which will get you in touch with your councillors. The alternative, of course, is to bugger off down the pub and bone them there. Bone, <laughs> that's not really what I mean. I don't mean... I didn't, I didn't really mean bone them. Not in that sense. Collar them. Collar them there. Uh, because if they're out like my counsellors, that's where they hold their surgeries in the pub. Uh, get away down there and sit down with them and say, look at how are you? Billy, Bob, Charlie, Joe, Fred, whatever your name is. This, it's a bit shite, this. Can we get something sorted out about it and get it done? Because they're just people like you and me. They fart. You know. I dare say they, they the do. I dare say they do. I, I'm not sure that they're people like me, to be honest with you. I, I couldn't be a counsellor, could you? Well, I could do it for three months, but I'd get fed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've uh, got the right sort of attitude. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I haven't, because everything that came up would be, do we really need another bylaw on how tall your privet hedge can be? <laughs> and, and, and seriously, if somebody wants to build another bathroom, another toilet in their master bedroom, let them do it. It doesn't need planning permission. It's just another bloody layer of legislation and regulation and no, you can't do it because we don't want you to. That's right. And I really, I just don't like that. It's another example of thou shalt not have fun unless it's the kind of fun we approve of. And that involves being, no, I'm just not going there because I'll insult too many people. Well, it involves paying them a, a fee. Uh, and what have you normally, doesn't it? Uh, you know, to, to be honest with you, I wish they'd spend a lot less time on that kind of thing and more time picking up dog shit, to be honest with you. That's what I want from the council. Yeah, I'd kind of like them to do what they used to do with the bins and actually come up the drive and get <laughs> yeah, them rather than just have to wheel the buggers about the place. <laughs> I'd kind of like, I, would, I tell you what I'd really like the councils to do, especially in Yorkshire, to get their bloody thumb out and get some fibre across to Marco. The poo buggers climbing up the walls, aren't you, Marco? <laughs> oh, I'm still here, you know, yes. Well, it, it's not the fibre that's the problem, Dave. As, as you know, it's been well lamented over the past few weeks. Well, you're, you're, getting, of... you're getting plenty of weight a bit, are you? <laughs> there's a bit of um, there's a bit of infrastructure that needs to be put in place between the current fibre cabinet that they've installed and the piece of crap that is the cabinet that I'm connected to. <laughs> um, so I've been reliably informed by my executive customer complaint handler. What um, the hell is one of them? Well, this, this is, you get one of these when you complain to a regional director, Dave, which is what I did. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, yes, I've been reliably informed that by the end of November, this should be in place. So that remains to be seen. So we shall keep an eye on that. But currently, I'm still on the old ADSL. <sighs> Not for want of trying, though, guys. Not for want of trying. I've had two orders really placed and two orders cancelled by wholesale. Do you reckon it'll actually be there at the end of November, or...? Uh, I've... It's as up in the air, DK. Oh, please, 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 God, I hope so. I'm so fed up of watching him cry. <laughs> <laughs> Twice a week, I mean, seriously, he cannot wear wellies anymore. Are you I've, drowning? That's him? shocking. It I, is, it's shocking. I've, got, I've got to wear armbands and everything so I don't drown. I couldn't it's tell clear. he was crying because the picture's that bad. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm looking at the stream on, on my phone, crazily enough, because I get 160 meg on my phone. Stupid. Um, and uh, my picture doesn't look too bad tonight, I have to say. <laughs> all right, um, OK. But, yeah, there you so, go. Yes. So what, what do you make of all this council crap and that, though? Well, a couple of people have mentioned in chat as, as you were going on, um about why they're taking note of who and not the rtp or the phe who are both as we all know in favor of the use of e6 um and they've they've said how safe they feel they are and they, they are a good alternative to using lit tobacco why they're not taking that into consideration instead of a body that 
hasn't got the right information and are I've got to choose my words carefully, haven't I? Um, not in a pocket of any big organisations. So, you know, the PHE and RCP have got no axe to grind with anyone in particular. They've got no conflict of, you know, investors or money coming in or all that kind of stuff. And they've told the truth, basically. Um, and who do I think they do? So, well, well, we'll find out more about that later, but yes, carry on. Yes. So that being said, I, I think it's it's down to educating the councils and we're going around and we're educating the stop smoking services uh, and we've got wonderful people um, like Granny Louisa who are doing absolute sterling work to try and change the ideology of the stop smoking services. The next thing is, you know, we still need to get all the MPs on side and we still need to get the local councils to, to start looking at this. Um, I mean, banning vaping on a beach, for goodness sake, in Wales, uh, that just makes no sense at all. Um, so it's a case of we've really got to start educating. So maybe we should start, you know, going to our councillors, going to council meetings and, and uh, raising questions. I might, look in, I, might look, I might look into that for, for Barnsley Council. Yeah. Barnsley? Barnsley. Barnsley. So there. Yeah. I'll, well, I'll, look in, I'll look into if I can get into, Bird a, came into from, a, you know. a meeting or, or get in to speak to somebody. I'll look into I, that. Take a camera because I, I can just imagine that. Right, right, right. We're sitting here now. We're going to have a word here from a bloke called Marco Van Basten. He's going to be talking about them uh, racing things. Now, he thinks they're a good job. And quite frankly, given that my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, my mother-in-law, and two of my kids are using these things, I think Marco's right. Give it to them, Marco. Tell them how you think now, son. It'd be about it, won't it, Marco? Uh, we, what, we don't even know. We don't know if the councils are actually making this decision independently or whether they're being pushed into it. I, I, to be honest, I'm not sure it's necessarily the councillors. I think quite often it'll be the officers who think, oh, well, we'll not bother the elected members with this. Might be a good idea for vapors up and down the country to go and speak to their elected members. Notice how I was very careful with the L, elected members. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, at the end of the day, you're not going to know, are they? Because they always pretend to be joined up, don't they? I mean, well, yes. But, uh, you know, what we do know is that it's in the council chamber that they bring in these policies and stuff. That's where they debate and vote on stuff and everything. So those are the people we go after, right? Yeah. Like I say, I know VIP's already got the infrastructure for doing the right to them things set up. So go to the VIP website, start there um, and, and carry on. I'm beginning, I'm, I'm just, I was thinking out, thinking out loud here. And I think we need... As, as, as vapors in the country, we probably need to be a bit more joined up ourselves, you know. I think we need people in each county, part of an organisation, that can organise things, that can put dues on, that can, you know what I mean? Have, like, county or local branches of, of organisations, like the NNA, like VIP, and have, you know, little little small little two and three man committees that can get stuff moving and get things organized because you kind of you kind of cover the whole of the country That's, and the one like, thing I'm... yeah i mean it sounds like the right way to go doesn't it Are, you know you're always faced with the uh, the same old problem though are you and that's numbers of people prepared to throw their hat in yeah well we, we know that's an issue nationally because it's one always been one of the biggest issues is getting numbers yeah at any kind of I mean, you're hearing that, that uh, Farage, whether you agree with him or not, is going to get 100,000 people marching through London within the next however long. And he'll get them. There'll be 100,000 people there. He'll he will. get them. But try and get 500 folks to London for a vaping protest. No, nah, it, it just doesn't happen, does it? It doesn't happen. No. But I think, I do think, if we had... Like where you are, Dave, uh, in Derby, aren't you? Uh, yeah, near as damn it, yep. So, what's that, the capital? Are you Derbyshire or are you...? Uh, technically not, 
My fence is the Derbyshire Leicestershire border. So you're in Leicestershire? North West Leicestershire, yes. Right, so for instance, this is just an instance, I'm not landing you in it. You would be the coordinator for Leicestershire and you, uh -huh. you would deal with Louise Ross and, and other people in Leicestershire. Yep. Mark yep. was in North York, South, West, Middle, wherever York. He's in South, one of the Yorks. South, South Yorkshire. I think, isn't it? Yeah. He's in, he's in, yeah. he's in South Yorkshire. Yes. So Mark o, Mark o would be the man for South Yorkshire. I would be the man for Tyne and Weir. We would have Sav being the person for... Oh, she's in Tyne and Weir as well. Well, Sav could do it, or I could do it, or somebody else could do it. But somebody in each, in, in each county just to coordinate crap that's going on there um, and, and get the word out. Because there's groups. I don't know if you, do you, if you go on Facebook, I know there's a Tyne and Weir Vapors. I know there's a Newcastle Vapors. There's a Sunderland Vapors. There's a Durham Vapors. There's, there's certainly a Leicestershire, Leicestershire and a Derbyshire. Yep, yep. I mean, well, both of those there groups. you go. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would be dead easy to get something sorted out like that. The people that have started those groups would be the very people who would be great at organising stuff. And then we might not see the lack of numbers at more local events, and I didn't really want to say a billion lives, but you know where I'm going with it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we might have, had a, might have had a bit more success with that if we'd had people on the ground in each of the counties doing that. Now, like I said, this just came to me while I was doing the one thing that I, can, I know I can do perfectly every morning <laughs> and afternoon. <laughs> You always have great ideas when you're sitting on the throne, don't you? And it, it and it just just occurred to me. Every other bloody organisation, the BMA, it doesn't matter what county you're in, they've got a spokesman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and it doesn't matter. It, it's a good formula. It's a good formula. It's interesting. Uh, there's uh, just about the time you suggested it, somebody in chat also suggested, you know, sort of trying to mine these Facebook groups and everything, because you know, there's tens of thousands of users in some of these. Um, they, 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 there's a lot of people, uh, but I saw a comment there, and I'm sorry I d can't remember who made it, but uh, that you know that it's mostly they're the hand check crowd, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah. but how how often have we actually taken a tangible, specific message to people and said, hey, here's something you can do? Um, I think. I think uh, as advocates on social media, we're very good at making a point to each other and at sharing stuff about and making a bit of noise. But um, I, th I think if you want to get more people involved, we've got to, we've got to take a tangible message <laughs> to the average bloke who's a vapor or woman, not being sexist, just, you know, the average well, Joe or Joanne. I, I think... I think we did a bit of that with the, the BBC protest, if you remember that one. We did a bit. We did a bit. That, that, that actually got big numbers because they didn't have to travel very far and people who had slightly more than a passing interest turned out. I mean, I met a few people that you wouldn't call active or activists, uh, but they were quite happy to turn out for an hour and have a bit of that to all the vapours. And if we can get that kind of thing going... I think that's, that's, that's probably not a bad idea. And it would enable us then to kind of put the hymn sheets out for singing to councillors and maybe even get people to go and see councillors because they're all organised on a county basis anyway. And that, that might do something to offset this current unpleasantness, which it would appear is being fed in part by the World Health Organisation's Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. Well, yes, sadly, there are a lot of people who still um, sort of respect their input, isn't there? I mean, um, do you know what would be a good model? You know the Glasgow School of Ape thing? Yep. You know, that kind of thing where you drag in people that you think should be aware, you know, sort of vape meat, drag in your local councillor, you know, make it clear to them. Um, you know, well, that, get, the local, that's, that's... get the local hack along for the local rag, that kind of thing. Well, this is what Andy Morrison's been doing up in Glasgow with the uh, the School of Vape up there, and he he works like a Trojan in Scotland. He really does. The biggest county in England, Scotland is, uh, on the on the basis we've been talking about. <laughs> and he's, he's he has done so much good work up there, and an awful lot of the good things that are happening are down. I had one of them earlier, but the leg dropped off. Yeah, um, but but it didn't go out. 
Ah. <laughs> you muted it, did you? People, people will wonder now. Um, oh, dear. nice one. No, I mean, it, you know, he's put all the legwork in. If, if I'll tell you what, if if there was another hundred Andy Morrisons in in the the UK, would be so well off. It would be great. Would also be slaughtered because the guy always brings you beer. There's no wrong with that. No, that's certainly not a complaint. But there were, if there were a hundred of him. <laughs> well, true, true. <laughs> we don't know. Sure, do you think? <laughs> well, yes. Shall we? Shall we draw a line under the councils for the moment? And uh, I think we should. I think we should have. I, th I think what we should do is we should have a look at this review. What you did. Oh, oh, right. Yes. Now that's the Tesla 150 Touch. What, <coughs> what with which I have in my hand right at this very second. That'd with be the slightly problem. different. Hey. Eh? That'd be the one. Yes. Shall we have a look at it? I think we should. Shall we? Shall we have a look at it? Let's have a look at it. Roll VT. So this is the Tesla Six 150 Touch. Um, before we switch it on, let's have a quick run round and see what it actually looks like. Um, that to me is the wrong way up, but you know who might argue. It's magnetic closure on the back, into which the batteries fit very nicely, uh, as per usual. Oops. Look, who's being messy? I'll show you I've been using it. Um, nicely marked, both interior and exterior. Um, quite like the way it goes together. I still think that the spring bit, this springy bit, should always be at the negative. It's just the way I am. But at least this one is marked here and also here as you may well be able to, to see if the light's right. Yeah, you can just see it flashing there. So, batteries go in. It's a magnetic catch, as you can see, um, and fits on quite nicely. And it feels quite solid in the hand. So it's the 150 watt TC temperature control touch. Um, the 510 connector, nicely placed, uh, neat and the fire button at the top. That's as much as there is on the outside aside from the now ubiquitous USB, uh, the micro USB. It doesn't charge, it's only for doing software updates. So let's uh, wipe the fingerprints off the front because my hands are always fingerprint makers. And let's Look at the software in action, as it were. So let's just switch it on, five clicks, and up it comes. It tells you it's Tesla Six, And there you have the screen. And the first thing that you'll see is it's unlocked, um, which means you can get into the menu. So let's just hit the menu before we, we look at anything else. And you'll see that there's a lock, there's a resistance lock. The material set allows you to switch between Canthal, Nickel 200, Stainless Steel 316 and TI. Um, go back with the back button. Uh, it's got screen sleep brightness, wallpaper language about software update. All of these things are there so you can set the screen, sl uh, screen sleep to be always 60 seconds, 45 seconds, 15 seconds um, and so on or never. Um, back we go. Back again. Um, so in use, well, let's stick a device on it. I'll use a, a TF-V8 because I happen to have one handy. We'll just screw it together as one does. Threads are really nice on this, I find. Um, and the TF-V8, as it happens, sits, look at that, almost perfectly sorted out for a TF-V8. So let's press the button and switch it on. And you'll see that it's currently set for 32 watts. Now, normally when you want to switch between temperature control and wattage and what have you, you've got to go into menus and do all kinds of things. Um, the first thing I want you to notice though, and again, I'll press the button, is that the lock symbol down here has automatically locked. It is automatically locked and I've got to press that and nothing happens, look. 
but here you'll just see a little balloon and if I swipe across it's now unlocked so if I want to change my wattage I simply press that middle bit it goes yellow and then I can up by swiping or tapping doesn't matter which way especially if you can find the right bit and up it goes so that's now at 62 watts or if you want to go to temperature mode and you've got temperature mode uh, material in your coil you simply press there and it switches between the two so temperature mode and I'm now in um, temperature mode and I, again by using these sliders change it all around but you press the button and automatically it locks so I can now mess around to my heart's content and nothing will happen also press the button and even on this particular device it seems to be doing temperature control let us see what we can see and yes indeed it's knocked it down to 20 watts and taken it out of temperature control that's telling me that I need actually to be uh, in wattage mode so let's unlock the lock press the button and go into wattage mode and take it up to what I know is decent and I'm having a look 83 will do for the moment for this and then it'll fire and tells you what's going on while it fires um, I really do rather like this whole auto lock thing um, let's swipe it off again and go back to the various different things the screen sleeps and wallpapers and all of that kind of stuff pressing that middle button gives you more information um, speed mode is the next one very difficult to do this correctly speed mode upside down there we go uh, soft standard mode I'm in power mode I like it I like it powerful and I like it straight on soft mode ramps up more slowly standard mode ramp, ramps up a little quicker and then power mode takes you straight up what else have we got um, there's a memory there this TCR so you can do all of the uh, the settings you can you can pick up um, all sorts of different uh, different settings there's memories there so you can select which one you want to use I won't bother um, and TCR so you can set your own settings for whatever whatever um, whatever material you're using in your coil um, pressing the button again as you can see it's unlocked press the button and it automatically locks so again without that actual swipe across there it's not going to do anything and if you press the button to use it when you're using it that's it you're sorted um, so that's the Tesla Touch 150 TC um, what do I think of it well I've got to tell you I've been using this a lot um, battery life is much as I would expect from two 18650s and obviously it depends what size 18650, 18650s you've got in there um, I'm using VTC4s as you can see and they'll get me through an evening um, a quick look it's it's got all of the puff count stuff available to you if you want it but it's not immediately accessible um, from the, the, the front screen and neither should it be I don't know anybody that wants to know that uh, off the top of their head I've been using this with the TFV8 since I got it at Vapor Expo um, and it, it, it swaps backwards and forwards with uh, with my usual Rulo RX23 um, and I, I quite like it, it's ergonomic, it's nicely shaped for the hand um, it sits well, it works well, it hasn't let me down it's temperature sensing with, uh, with stainless steel coils particularly is very good 
Uh, I've got no nickel coils available to check it out unfortunately but in stainless steel mode its temperature control is bang on. Um, in wattage mode it's working exactly as I would expect it to. It's sensing coils perfectly well. Um, as a piece of kit goes for something that's portable and usable and has that kind of, what's the word I'm looking for, geek factor I suppose. Yeah. Um, I haven't had any phone calls on it yet, <laughs> uh, though one or two people have asked me, you know, can you make a phone call on it, and no, there's no camera built into it either. It is what it is, I quite like it. Um, it's sturdy, I've dropped it a couple of times and it hasn't even marked, never mind anything else. It's built in metal, it's a nice piece of kit. The uh, Tesla 150 Touch, I like this a lot. And we're back in the studio. Dave, thanks very much for having a look at that for us. Uh, it's my great pleasure. I've, I've, it's, it's one of these ones that's hard to put down. It's really yeah, nice. I've got I like that it. feeling. I, I, I got a brief glimpse of it at Vapor Expo when the Tesla girls brought it over. And it does look like... So this device. Is... Oh, and I just played the VT again then. Did you? Yeah, but I fixed it. They won't have noticed. They're all asleep. <laughs> Are no, I, I forgot to mention actually when I looked at it that you can put your own photographs and whatever on there if you have a PC. Oh, no Mac option. Not yet. Ah, that's why you need a PC. No, that's why I'm talking to them and saying Mac option, please. <laughs> Get a proper computer. I've done with it. No, right. I want one that works. <laughs> <laughs> and one that, one that Windows 10 won't take out of uh, out of action, thank you very much. Windows 10's good. It's all right. I've had no issues with it at all so far. Yeah, that's famous last words, isn't it? Anyway, right, shall we move along swiftly? Let's move, Let's along, move swiftly. along swiftly. Right, so yeah. the big news over the last couple of days uh, is the FCTC discussions that are taking part in Delhi. So this is the uh, Framework Convention on Tobacco Controls WHO COP7. What was it? It's a conference, I guess, isn't it? It's the conference. It's the seventh conference of the parties. Uh, the parties being the signatories to the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, which is actually taking place at the same time as the 22nd conference of the parties on climate change. Right. OK. But not in, this, not in the same place. Right. Yeah, I was going to say there'd be something very ironic about a climate change discussion. I saw some pictures. Uh, of, 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 uh, honestly, there was a guy vaping and there was more vapour and smog away from him than there was than he was breathing out. You could barely see. Yes, yeah, somebody had mistakenly thought that I was in Delhi and cloud chasing. <laughs> With some extremely dirty juice, it must have been as well. It's oh, oh, it looks foul over there. Um, I mean, they couldn't have picked a worse place to have it. The only place worse would have been in the Philippines, I think. Yeah, possibly. I mean, I've, the, the worst pollution I've ever seen was in Beijing. That That's not pretty, but it didn't look a patch on those pictures I saw earlier. So anyway. No, anyway. Delhi's, Delhi's been horrible. But yes, be, before we get into these, there's four interviews that Dick Puddlecourt's done we should we should preface this with and we should also say as I said right at the top of the show he's done this out of the goodness of his heart for you people and for us and, and so on and so forth and I'm so grateful we're all so grateful for that but we haven't had time to watch them we do know <laughs> there's a little bit of background noise going on so you may have to listen carefully um, this is real footage this is this is like at, from the front line this is, yes, you ain't going to get this anywhere else, <laughs> only on VTTV. And we're starting off with a guy called uh, Nilesh Jain, who is from the Association of Vapors India. Roll VT. Okay, I'm here with uh, Nilesh Jain of the Association of Vapors India, newly formed. Um, and you're going to ask me some questions. So, Nilesh, the first one, could you tell us about your association, how you came to be involved, um, and all that sort of thing? Hi, everybody. Uh, Nilesh here from uh, Association of Vapors India. This is a fairly new organization that we're forming. 
primarily if you look at uh, vaping in India has recently picked up uh, about say about 12 months, 6 to 12 months ago. Uh, one of the biggest requirement was to get people together and come together and talk for a cause. Uh, not a lot of consumers can come together and start discussing. Uh, one of the intense, and we saw a lot of groups coming into India on Facebook and WhatsApp and different ways of communication. So as a group of people, we got together and said, let's form an association that talks about consumers and safety for consumers. Right, because it's a fairly new industry, you've got a lot of small mom and pop vendors coming up. We want to make sure that there's a, a process and a standard that's followed to make liquids and devices and being sold in India. So that's how the Asian, uh, the, the Indian Association of Vapors in India uh, came into being. So it's a small group, we are roughly about 1,000 people now. Uh, if you look at India, the vaping community in total would be between. 50,000 to 100,000 users today, and we expect that in the next you know, six months, 12 months, to grow more than three times or four times. So that's a fairly large community um, switching on from smoking to vaping, and having a body that can represent the customers, so the consumers, is of uh, important significance at this point in time. You know, given the COP7, uh, and given what's happening with COP7, uh, it's now more important to fight or, or talk about the importance of consumer rights and what uh, you know harm reduction can bring into this mix. So that's one of the lead causes of why we've come together as an association uh, for vapors in India. And what, what's the state of vaping in India at the moment? So right now, vaping is, is very nascent. It's too early. A lot of people uh, are not aware. So, <laughs> okay. so uh, vaping in India is fairly new. A lot of people are not aware about vaping. Uh, they know that something exists, but they don't know how to use the devices. They don't know what devices look like. So a lot of education is also required in India. And education from you know, the benefits of vaping, the harm reduction efforts of vaping, right? And this is one of the efforts that AVI is trying to put together and take it back to the consumer and say, this is what vaping means, this is what the standards are, this is what uh, the consumers need to follow. And on the other side, we're also talking to vendors and manufacturers say, this is what you should be following to ensure safety of the customers. So again, India, uh, I think vaping is about to explode. There's a big, a big smoking population. If you uh, know about the numbers, there are 108 million smokers in India. Right? So 108 lives can be saved if we can have the right process and the right education and the right information shared uh, across India. And how many vapors in, in India do you estimate? Uh, roughly between 50,000 to 100,000 vapors as of today. Uh, and we expect this to at least more than double or triple in the next 6 to 12 months. Okay, that's quite market. Okay. Yeah, it, it is a sizable market and it's, it's waiting to explode because uh, people are now getting aware of what devices are, what vaping is, and what e-cigarette means, and they understand the benefits. So we see a lot of uh, consumers coming in and asking the right questions. Uh, now we hope they'll start trying and start you know, converting or, or going for uh, you know, harm reduction products versus the traditional cigarettes. Um, so what, what do you hope to achieve, short term and long term? I think what we hope to achieve, number one priority for Association of Vapors in India is going to be um, education and information sharing. We will talk about the benefits of vaping, talk about harm reduction, and the most important aspect is talk about alternative available, alternatives available for, for, for smoking, right? A lot of people in India don't know that this exists. So our short term goal is to make sure consumers are aware, the, you know, the smoking population is aware, that are, are healthier and safer alternatives for smoking and also the harm reduction benefits of smoking uh, by vaping. And um, I mean, I have quite apart from what I came here tonight, I haven't seen the vape here yeah. anywhere since I've been here. So, so it's just, just, it's just uh, I suppose, raising awareness and let authorities know as well that it's not a threat. Yes, yes. yes. So a lot of the population in India, the vaping population in India, is still from middle class to higher middle class income people. It hasn't yet you know, gone down to the lower middle class. And there is a myth that vaping is expensive, but if you go back and look at the real numbers, vaping actually comes out to be cheaper than smoking uh, cigarettes or, or even beeries. There's also a class of people that is moving up from smoking beeries into cigarettes. So that's the class that we need to educate and inform uh, of the you know, harm reduction benefits of vaping. Uh, last question as we're here for COP7. Are you positive or negative about the outcome? Of <laughs> so, uh, you know, what I want to say is this is an interesting con conference. We were there in the morning uh, in the public domain. Uh, 
I guess, you know, for now, there's, there's the, the reports that we've read, the, the studies that we've seen, it is very biased. It doesn't take into uh, account what the real benefits of vaping are. They don't talk about the traditional cigarettes. Uh, they're, they're not talking about harm reduction. It should be their focus. Right? You have 108 million people in India. If you're not talking about harm reduction, what are we discussing? Yeah. So I'm pretty negative about what the outcomes could be for the vaping industry, but let's hope for the best and uh, you know, hopefully things will go in the right direction. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Right, and just before we uh, carry on uh, and talk, chat about that, uh, I, I just want to add my thanks to Dick Puddlecoat. Um, the, <laughs> we, people have been tweeting as, as much as they can about the proceedings uh, uh, over there in Delhi uh, over the last uh, the course of the day. And the big news was about lunchtime, wasn't it, Dave, when they kicked all the press and the public out? <laughs> Again, yeah. again. The cop, so, cop seven, FCTC, bragging how transparent they are. We've even got a tweet wall. Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, they're actually doing everything they can to stop those of us who pay their wages knowing what they're doing. And um, and so, you know, we're extremely grateful. We got some uh, some feedback there from Dick. Really, I think it's fabulous. Even more so when you consider that they stopped Dave Gurlitz, the Winston man, from going in. The man who is one of the stars of A Billion that Lives. That was shocking, was wasn't it? That was shocking. Yeah. Something uh, about his passport photo being a bit fuzzy. Yeah, yeah. Any old, but, any old crap that, wasn't it, really? The fact of the matter is, Dave Gurlitz, and he won't argue, Dave Gurlitz is a bit blurry and fuzzy. His passport photo was very accurate. They just didn't want him in because he's the man that can shoot COP7 down. And... I'm not usually one for conspiracy theories, but no, I'm sorry. They've had their fingers in that. It's completely wrong. Completely wrong. What, what, Never mind, what convinced me, because I, I, when, when I first saw it as well, I've heard so many stories that people have told about trying to get into India and you have to queue at this kiosk, then that one, get the visa stamped and all the rest of it, and it is an administrative nightmare and you, you know, it's apparently potluck whether they'll let you in or out. <laughs> it has to be said uh, yes. because of all the red tape. But um, it was the bit about them him trying to appeal it and then refusing him the the, the right to appeal their decision. I can't mm. see any reason why you would do that <laughs> unless you well, were deliberately trying to keep somebody out. Which is exactly it would appear what they're trying to do. Um, but you know, I, I it, it's interesting to hear um, what what uh, what Nilesh had to say about the numbers over there um, between fifty and a hundred thousand in in a population of did somebody say it, eighty million smokers? A hundred and eight, I think it was a hundred and eight million smokers. Yeah, yeah, well, okay. it's a hundred and eight million smokers, Marco, and, yeah. and you know, they, they're Jesus. They must be really worried about their profit margins over there, then. If they're trying to uh, lock people up and stuff, um, it's just as bad, possibly even worse, in the Philippines, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because isn't, isn't 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 that where Duterte is shooting all the drug barons and drug users and drug peddlers? That's right. Yes, yes. He. he... He seems uh, the WHO seem to think it's a good idea. He wants to shoot everybody, doesn't he? Well, they've given him a war an award. Yes, I, I heard. I heard that. <laughs> I, I, it just defies. I, you know, it, it's hard to find the words, really, isn't it? <laughs> um, well, I've got two words for them, but I'm not sure I should use them. Like uh, the first one start, starts with F and ends in King. And the second one starts with W and ends with something that you stop a ship from moving with. Ah, yes, yes, a bow line, yeah. <laughs> exactly, <right. laughs> fucking wankers. Um, but, but you know, seamless links being us, the next guy up uh, that, that Dick was talking to is a guy called Tom Pinlock of the Vapors Philippines. And I'm, I'm, I think if he's got any sense, he'll stay in India. He might be safe. And <laughs> <that you turn. laughs> Slightly less, less sort of tyrannic. Okay, uh, Rolf VT. 
Okay, we've got with us now um, Mustafa, who's um, uh, an Indian vapor. Um, I think you said from Delhi or Kashmir or somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we don't know a lot about Indian vaping in the UK. So firstly, do you want to tell us your story, how you became a vaper um, in the first place? You know, I take it you smoked beforehand. Yeah, exactly. Uh, when I started uh, smoking back in 2005, uh, at the early age of uh, 15, uh, all this is due to hanging out with friends who are all be smokers. So I smoked for around 10 years. Uh, so back in 2014, uh, I was fortunate to travel to the UK for, uh, to study my masters, and over there I sort of uh, became uh, aware of uh, uh, vaping. And I've seen people uh, like like I got uh, sort of uh, stumble upon people who's, like vaping these devices and uh, without lighting them up uh, uh, with the lighter. So I was very confused on how is this possible. So I started doing a lot of research online and asking uh, these people and some of my other people, my classmates who were also vapors. I uh, started asking them, you know, what's this device? Uh, why, why are you like using them? They said, yeah, it's, it's, it's an alternative to smoking. Uh, you could sort of give it a try. So uh, I ordered uh, online my first uh, vaping device, which was an uh, Kanga e -board. And I was like surprised at how it was sort of similar to smoking a cigarette and the various flavors that were available to me. Uh, so obviously the transition wasn't easy. Uh, I started uh, vaping uh, as well as smoking side by side just to ease the transition. And finally, in three months of time, I started vaping and quit uh, smoking for good. So it's been uh, two years now that I haven't been uh, smoking and I feel good. I get to spend time with my family and friends without smelling like an ashtray basically. So yeah. Okay. Um... So, what's your assessment of how vaping is? You know, what's the state of vaping in India at the moment? Uh, well, at the moment, I think so. It is growing, but at a very steady pace uh, because India is one of the largest consumers of uh, tobacco, uh, tobacco products in uh, uh, my perspective because the availability of uh, tobacco products are very easy. Uh, you will find children uh, smoke cigarettes because there is no regulation uh, put uh, on them. Uh, uh, when I came back uh, to India, uh, it was kind of difficult to find uh, vaping products or e-liquids uh, as of such. So I did a lot of research and asking people around like if there is uh, a way of uh, uh, getting my hands on vaping products. Uh, there are a few authentic vendors out there. Uh, however, I think so with the new regulations that are coming up from the, uh, the event that's going on here over here in Delhi, the delegations, they're trying to impose ban on e-cigarettes. So I hope uh, something positive comes out for the vaping industry and people could, you know, switch to vaping and leave cigarettes for good. Uh, so yeah, I was speaking to Nick Hill earlier, and he said um, he said something about sometimes you can get policemen who, who claim that vaping is banned and, and might try and arrest you in the street. Is that something that is that just a few rogue policemen, or is that something? Uh, I guess so. It's all of the police yeah. men in general because. We as vapers need to educate them and uh, tell them like you know vaping is nothing related to cigarettes or drugs uh, for that matter because many people yeah, he out there. They, he said they th he thinks that you know, they think that you'll be putting um, cannabis in it. Cannabis exactly because of the amount of vapor that they uh, witness. Yeah. So basically, you can't fight against them because uh, the government is very strict. There's so, uh, since it's still on an early phase uh, of development. Uh, not all of the uh, so authorities are uh, yeah. not aware uh, educated products, about the uh, product, so we as people need to put out, put the word out there, you know what, vaping is a safer alternative to smoking. Uh, we need to come together and uh, put our best efforts in to making that happen. Is there, is there actually a law against vaping? Or is this, this, there's no law against vaping, is there? As of such in India, no. There's no such law against vaping because it's still uh, sort of new.
Mm. But I hope I like uh, something positive comes out yeah. at the end of the day. So do, um, <laughs> do you think that are there any plans for law? Or are they just going to go with what the World Health Organization says? Uh, but you know, the tobacco industry is such such a large this behemoth organization. Obviously, I wouldn't say they pay people to go against the vaping community because yes, uh, we understand that uh, there are vendors out there who who's living uh, when they put food on the plate, it's all on selling these uh, tobacco products or chewing tobacco. Uh, maybe like helping them as well sell vaping products will uh, sort of uh, improve, uh, uh, sorry, uh, put the word out there basically and hopefully the organization understands this that we as vapors have a right to vape and we are not polluting the environment. Instead, we are so saving uh, the planet and uh, individuals as well. Okay. And lastly, this is for Vapor Shows TV, and um, they'd like to see a good cloud, so we'd like to uh, sign off with a... Okay. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, I like that. Do that again. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the vape on. <laughs> Thank you. And we're back. Um, right, okay, apologies. In our rush to get literally, we did this with minutes just before we went on air. Um, that was not Tom. Pinlock of Vapors Philippines at all. Uh, that was Mustafa, uh, another Indian vapor. Um, and uh, I, was, I thought that was a lovely cloudy blue for Vapor Trials TV at the end there, Dave. I don't yes, know. Yes, I, I, I shall join him in solidarity with our Indian vapor friends. Absolutely right. Um, I picked a comment up uh, in chat there. So somebody uh, pointed out the, uh, the, 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 um, the fact that, that you know, th there's no, no rules, no age restrictions on smoking, but they want to ban vaping. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yes. Uh, Chris Bailey's just said on the long list of places I want to go, India's never made the list. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I would want to go there either, if I'm to be honest. I don't know. Maybe not I'm just don't. a masochist or something, but. I quite fancy it. <laughs> I, I might, I might consider taking a Harley and riding round their roads, but that would be it. And that's only because it's warm and they don't get a lot of rain. <laughs> I think I might be selective about the parts I went to. <laughs> anyway, I've never been, but you know, I quite like it. Can I? Do, I'll just interject here because of course. India's India's tobacco industry is worth eleven billion dollars. They are the third biggest producer of tobacco. Um, there's a couple of stats there I've just put, picked out. Um, I'm using the wrong mouse here. I'm looking at the other monitor, but um, I'm just looking. There's a nice little piece here in the Economic Times. Uh, India's tobacco industry government face off ahead of WHO conference. Um, and I would put the link into chat, but I'm not logged into chat on the main PC. <laughs> And I am, That's the way I, am but, I am, but not as an admin, I've just discovered. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Sav, I'm going to post this into Skype. Sky, and you can put it in. There you go. And there goes the link. Yeah. Oops, wrong keyboard, that keyboard. There we go. There's an awful yes. lot of hypocrisy and hidden agendas, isn't there, in tobacco control policy? It's... Uh, yes. And some of them are not that bloody hidden. It's it's pretty bloody blatant, really, isn't it? I mean, let's face it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what we're up against, guys. Anyway, I think uh, we should now rectify our wrong. Uh, this next bit of VT coming up actually is Tom Pinlock of <laughs> Vapor Philippines. I think we're ninety-five. Please. We're ninety-five percent sure. Please, 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 sure. please be Tom. Okay, I've now got Tom Pinlock of the Vapors Association in Philippines. 
just the vapors full of ink. Uh, hello, Tom. Hi. Um, can you just start off and tell us what the state of vaping is in the Philippines? Um, well, vaping in the Philippines is actually growing and it's growing really fast. Um, you'll see that a lot of smokers, um, given um, proper information, actually switch to this uh, better alternative. Um, so right now uh, it's slowed down a little bit um, because of uh, fear of it becoming bad um, because of the unknown. It's basically. Yeah. But the growth is actually very, very fast. Um, uh, even in the communities, you'll see that uh, probably around 10 to 15 percent are actually interested. Uh, 10 to 15 percent of the smoking population is probably interested. Um, even in my circle, my friends, uh, probably like more than one fourth of the, my group, uh, my colleagues at work, um, actually have already switched to vaping. You said there's quite a lot of vapors in the uh, Philippines, didn't you? Yeah. You gave quite a figure. Do you want to tell us how many that was? Um, going across uh, the online groups and uh, talking to some of the other consumer groups, um, a good estimate would be somewhere around 100,000 uh, right now, I mean, identified. But of course, there are um, areas uh, where there's not a lot of online presence, so we don't really know what the numbers are. But if you go around the country, you'll see that even in remote areas, there will be people actually vaping. Yeah, it's quite a market. Yeah. yeah. So what's, uh, what's been your concerns as a consumer group? Um, our primary concern is the uncertainty of its status uh, um, with regards to what the go how the government sees it. Because um, right now uh, there there were threats, there were rumors uh, that it could be banned, and that's how the current administration is looking at it. Um, I think it stems mostly because of the lack of information that is available in the Philippines. Um, there's not really a lot of experts or people who have actually um, dove in and have proper data and information about it. Uh, and that's the reason why we're reaching out as well. Uh, we want to know what's going on in other countries. Um, how does uh, the other countries' governments treat vapors and vaping in general? Um, as a consumer group as well, um, our concerns are rather personal, like um, the manufacturing of uh, e-juice. Um, how is it done? How is it? It's not current because currently it's not being regulated, and we want that to stop. We want to know exactly what's in the e-juice, so what what we're actually using um, on a daily basis. Um, we want it regulated, uh, we want uh, quality control over it, and um, that's our primary push. Uh, we don't want uh, vaping to be banned whatsoever, because we, we definitely feel that it's a very good alternative to tobacco smoking. Of course, you've got President Duterte, Duterte um, who veered the cost of, um, of the FTC, FTC, FCTC yeah. recently praised. Um, how do you think he's going to see vaping? And what's the future of vaping with him as the president? Um, with regards to uh, the president, um, we understand that his administration uh, has an iron hand with regards to things that the administration feels or believes is illegal. Um, and that's one of our fears. We don't want this current administration to ban the use of vape and uh, for people to actually use this product. Um, we want us as consumers to be able to uh, choose how we actually satisfy ourselves using nicotine. Now, because of the lack of information, the people in the current administration of President Duterte um, will not make the proper judgment with regards to how they're going to treat it. There are rumors, um, there were pressure, there was pressure that um, it should be banned, that it might be banned in the near future, and that's something that we don't want. We don't want vapors to actually go into hiding and just use a product that could potentially um, help them uh, have a better lifestyle, um, become healthier as compared to traditional tobacco smoking. And what would you do if it's banned? Um, 
Would you stop right now? I probably won't. I have. Um, I know how to do uh, DIY juice. Um, so the, 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 pro the products are actually um, available individually, so you can create your own. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that the black market is going to uh, come out. I mean, products will still be coming in. Um, just you're just going to be able to buy them off of shady people, which of course, if regulated, won't happen. Yeah. So vaping, I don't think vaping will stop. Yeah. It's just the prominence of vaping. Uh, that's going to be lessened if it's bad in the first place. Okay. Thanks. Um, lastly, this is for um, beer producer for Vapor Trust TV, um, and they do like to see a nice big cloud occasionally, okay. so <laughs> could you give, give them one to sign off? <laughs> All right. I don't usually make big clouds, but for you, I'll make an exception. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. That's what we like to see. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, Tom. Thank you for your time. And we're back in the studio. Uh, that then was Tom Pinlock from uh, Vapors Philippine. I think it was Philippine singular as well. Some really interesting points that he made there. And, and you know, what a cracking attitude. So his view is that, that, that you know, that the uh, although the administration are trying to govern what they think is illegal with an iron hand, he sees it uh, as his job to educate them, to show them why it isn't illegal. It's just an interpretation of the law and they're getting it wrong. What a cracking attitude. Uh, yes. I like that. I like that. And uh, how many times have we heard that as well uh, about, uh, you know, uh, he said uh, if it was banned, then uh, he'd go to the black market. Shouldn't be a problem. So that's that's a good attitude, isn't it? You know, because, you know, <laughs> let's face it, we, we're going to get a slap on the wrist when we get caught. We're going to get a letter <laughs> saying we've intercepted it this customs, pack it in. That's what's going to happen to us. Those yeah. guys are going to have, like, guys with guns turn up at the door. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. What was encouraging, though, I mean, you know, he was saying that there's currently no regulation on, on juice manufacturing, uh, and that's something they want. They don't want a ban, but they, they do want some regulation around the juice manufacturing, which is brilliant. Um, and But they're also, you know, suffering with the uncertainty of, of not knowing what the government is going to do. And with 100,000 plus vapors in the Philippines, and we've all seen some cracking mech mods come out of the Philippines. There's some great guys making stuff as well that we've seen over here. They've got a really good, really good pedigree, haven't they, basically, in the yeah. Philippines? Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. Well, Junkie relocated to the Philippines. That's what I was trying to remember. I was trying to remember who was it who moved there. That's right. They 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 cut their ties, didn't they, with Joytech? Yep. And toddled off to the Philippines. We never heard from them since. So perhaps that's not a great example. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> but yes, Maybe they not. did. They 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 relocated the entire business there, didn't they? When we they did. brought out that thing with the joystick. Do you remember, it looked like a Scud missile. Yes, I've still got that. Still doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry, Janty. <laughs> okay. Uh, we actually have, we have one more piece of ET that Dick Puddlecoat sent. Um, and this is... Praveen. And I'm, I'm just, I, I apologise for the unprofessional. <laughs> um, I can't even find it. Okay, Dave, who is it? It's Praveen. Yeah. He's an Indian vapor. Um, and again, you know, this is this basically is his story. Um, these are our brothers and sisters in in far flung parts who are having a much harder job of it than we are. Um, and I think it's one of the reasons that I'm I'm so keen that we managed to set INCO up. At last, at the last GFN, because we're bringing all of these various different national bodies together under one big umbrella in core that should have 20,000 followers by the 1st of December, please, on Twitter and everywhere else. I, Make I, it happen. I sense that we'll come back to that topic after this VT. I think that's probably a good idea. It could happen. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, so this is Praveen and Praveen's story. Uh, we have Praveen um, uh, from India, from Delhi. 
from Bangalore. From Bangalore. Um, uh, so I just want to ask you a couple of questions, really. Uh, Praveen, how did you get into vaping, and what's your story with vaping? Okay. So a lot of people have asked me in the past because uh, I had been an advocate and I've uh, helped a lot of people switch over to vaping in the near past. Uh, so people asked, why did you pick up smoking? I mean, was it my high pressure IT job or was I really stressed about something? Uh, not really. I started smoking because I really enjoyed it. Uh, even today I would say that uh, cigarettes are great, but with such greatness, comes illness that creates a lot of discomfort. So, uh, in 2012, when there was an opportunity uh, which presented itself in the form of vaping, which also happened to be the safest uh, alternative, I thought, why not give it a shot? Not purely from an addiction standpoint, I could uh, you know, stay away from cigarettes at will. But however, I really enjoyed smoking. And then when I got a chance to vape, I tried it. Uh, but after I started vaping, I never touched another cigarette again. So you, so you just like to, a cigarette with a beer every now and then or something like that? Yeah. Beg your pardon? You just like a cigarette with a beer every now and then? And, exactly. Yeah. And so now you use vape instead of... Uh, I vape. I vape for uh, nearly three, three and a half years. And now I do not have the need to vape as well. Uh, right, yeah. I would say I quit vaping too. Right. And now I uh, function more as an advocate to help people transition, to help me, uh, to help people make the right choice when it comes to hardware and uh, e-liquids. Because when it comes to vaping, making the first smart decision uh, takes them a long way, makes it work for them, and also helps them stay away from cigarettes. So wherever I could uh, bring in my experience, wherever I could educate people, I step in, and wherever there is. Uh, 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 how can I put it, wherever people's choice is taken away, I uh, make it my responsibility to step in and ensure that uh, the road is cleared for them. Okay. Um, and what do you, what's your assessment of vaping in India? You know, how do you think it's playing out? What do you think its future is? There is certainly a lot of potential in India, but as every good thing begins, there is always a challenge that comes along with it. Uh, the vape ban in India, uh, particularly in four states of uh, Karnataka, Punjab, Maharashtra and Kerala, is primarily based on an ideology and not backed by any scientific facts. Mm -hmm. uh, so this challenge has presented itself a great opportunity for us not to blame the government or to challenge the government, but this is a great, great opportunity for us to tell the government uh, that we are willing to work with you. So listen to us, we will educate you and along the way, we could create a parallel for cigarettes which are much safer and also this has the potential to save a lot of lives. Okay. What, what are you vaping at the moment? Uh, this is not my device. Uh, somebody here gave it to me. Uh, zero, I mean this has no nicotine. Yeah. yeah. How does that work in India? I've heard that um, nicotine, it, it, is, is nicotine not allowed in an e-liquid in e officially? but but vendors sometimes put it in, is that, is that the case? There is a lot of misconception about nicotine, uh, a lot of uh, ill-informed choices uh, are given to people. Uh, nicotine, nicotine as such in a regulated dosage is not going to be harmful. Nicotine in cigarettes is uh, as good as caffeine in coffee, yeah. it's going to create the same effect on the body. Yeah. But so, I, mean, I, mean, uh, I mean specifically, um, are there rules on nicotine in e-liquids in India or, or is it is it okay to sell them? Because I heard that, that they were selling zero nicotine liquid, but with, when people actually know there's nicotine in it, just to get around the rules. Is that, is that true? Or is that zero mg nicotine is not going to work for anybody, so selling zero mg liquid is as good as uh, you know, not selling a wave product to anybody. Right, yeah. So I would say the government has to uh, come up with smart measures to change this policy, because right now nicotine is parked as a drug. So in order for anybody to sell nicotine, they need to have a drug license, right. which is not congenial for a lot of smaller businesses. Yeah. So nicotine has to be valued for what it is, and also and also the uh, decision-making authority should learn as to uh, what nicotine could do, instead of uh, you know uh, blindly saying that nicotine is poison and nicotine is going to harm and nicotine would do no good. Yeah. Because if nicotine has to be banned, all nightshade plants have to be banned, right from eggplant to potatoes to tomatoes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, um, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. We're back in the studio. 
Uh, right, I, I'm going to make the first observation on that video. And even though that's an Indian guy sitting in India, right, is that the same story that you've heard a hundred times? <laughs> Doesn't it just show that, you know, we're all pretty much the same? Yeah, the, the, the reasons that he got into smoking, his views of nicotine, uh, it's, you know, that could have been you or me saying that easily, Dave. Yeah, any of us, Mark, all the lot of us, everybody. Yeah. I mean, we've all got the stories the same for everybody, isn't it, really? Absolutely. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, and, and, uh, one of the comments I saw in chat there is he seems to be a very clued up guy. And he did, didn't he? Very much so. Yeah, I like his comment there, selling zero nick um, e-liquidity. You might as well not bother selling any vaping kit. Um, and also made the same thing as we've all we've been saying for ages um, around the world, and that is that nicotine is as bad as bad for you as caffeine. Yeah, absolutely. So properly clued up. Um, yeah. He seems to, uh, I liked what he said there as well about when he sees like people having their rights denied to them, he feels that he needs to speak up when he sees their choice being taken away from them. Um, yeah, a man after my own heart is Praveen. Right, that's all of the videos that we got from uh, uh, COP7. Uh, from the, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to come up with something else for FCTC. <laughs> But it, Do it, tell. It needs finessing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, but the, uh, those lovely people spending our tax money on worthwhile causes, uh, arresting farmers and stuff like that outside the conferences and arresting people for vaping and, and all of that. Yes, wonderful, fantastic. Uh, huge thank you to Dick Puddlecoat. Thank you for sending that on to us. I uh, wish we'd had a few more minutes <laughs> to, to get the right names on the right clips. But, you know, you can't have everything, can you? Well, anyway, it's yeah. the plan stuff, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's tomorrow in India. We've got them minutes before the show. Um, and all credit to Dick for, for doing that for us and for the vapors out there. Well said. Absolute, absolutely right, yes. One more time. I am grateful for Dick. <laughs> Puddle coat. To... Thank you. It didn't come out very well, did it? Good old yes. dick. Can't be a bit of dick. Right. Uh, we said that we would return to the subject of income. We did. Right. Remind us, Dave, what is it? Um, INCO is it's the umbrella organisation for national vaping organizations nna is a member nna australia is a member there's new zealand members dutch members german blah 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 all the various different countries i think we've got 11 there are 11 adding to every day as well um member organizations of inco and inco exists as a as a a channel of information sharing between all of the different organizations and can coordinate international actions um one of the 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 chairs if you like one of the the members of the committee is our own judy gibson from the uk um and at can be fritz is in there as well um and and other people i won't name them all because basically my memory's failing me and i've got no notes open at the minute um but yeah it, it's uh it's intended to facilitate communication between all of the different advocacy uh, groups worldwide and it, it, it's coordinating the worldwide vaping movement um, and it is my feeling that there should have at least a thousand followers on Twitter by the end of the night and there should be at least 20,000 followers by the 1st of December because that's how important it is and their Twitter ID is NNC O org, I believe. Yeah. So yeah. Actually, put it in the chat. Yeah, it is. It's in chat. But for those people who are watching it on catch up, it's uh, at n n c o org or one word. And I think I, what I'll do is I'll put you guys full screen and I'll make a lower third. 
<laughs> Ooh, lower third. How risky is that, eh? <laughs> well, you're, you're living on the edge here, Div. Yeah, I can't remember it, how to do it, but it'll be fine. You, you're going to you edit it. Little... back control, and he puts another third up. I tell you what, he's, he's, he's living right on the edge here, editing a lower third live in Wirecast while we're broadcasting. Don't, don't <laughs> oh, just nobody move. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do anything you shouldn't do. Nobody move. Is, what could possibly yes. go wrong here? Everything. <laughs> Absolutely everything. Yes, currently five, eight, 580 followers from, I think, 411 this morning. So let's uh, let's get there. Let's get there. I N N C O org with no dots. There's an I, -N -N I in it. Now you tell I -N me. I N Co I N N C O org. In Co. I've got my glasses on as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, but, he, he, I think it looks a little bit like this. Da, 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 da. Da. Is it there? I can't, I can't see it because I've uh, I've shut my player down now. Oh, well, I've I've gone waiting for it to get to me because I'm in the, <laughs> in the control room here. Right, because I People can't be... spell Inco, <laughs> I have now written it down. <laughs> so, get on to Twitter, follow them. You know, um, as with all of these organisations, you know, you want to be following them. You want to give them legitimacy. Legitimacy. I can say it. Um, it's this Coke. Or the cola flavoured soft drinks are available. Like Lucas said. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. It gives them legitimacy the if they are representing thousands of people rather than hundreds. Uh, and I'll be honest, they only came to my attention earlier when it was doing the rounds on Twitter. So I followed them. It's like one click in it. So do it, do it. And what's the target, Dave? 10,000 by when? 20,000 by December the 1st is the figure I would like to see. Um, that will give INCO the legitimacy it requires uh, to be able to act um, and, and, and be taken seriously by all kinds of organizations that we need to correspond with. Yeah. Um, the, the, the guys that are running it, that are pulling it all together are doing an absolutely fabulous job. Please, 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 please support them, follow them. You don't have to join anything, just follow them and get everybody you know to follow them. So when it comes to Follow Friday this week, just when you do your FF, make it all in core org Good and idea. get everybody following them. Um, I, I would I would love to see it up there to 20,000. I really would. Um, because that the, the legitimacy that that gives, you know, we said earlier on in the show, one of the big problems that we've got is numbers. Um, yes. The, the bigger the number, the higher the legitimacy, the more you listen to. So follow, 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 follow. Yeah. And I, just to add something, uh, like I say, I only came, became aware of them myself earlier because I've had my head in the sand. Uh, the stuff they've been tweeting today has been really good stuff. It's been really good thought provoking. They've been posting uh, graphics uh, on Twitter, uh, basically poking at COP7, desperately trying to get a response from them without luck so far, as far as I can tell. But uh, it's uh, well thought out, well constructed stuff that they're, that, that they're uh, publishing. Yes. Yes, it's... it's uh... I was I was ever so pleased when uh, it took its nascence at the Global Forum on Nicotine earlier on this year, um, and here it's now in action um, and actually doing stuff and tying everybody together. And I would love to see all of the vaping organisations uh, worldwide coming under the umbrella of Inco, um, and it just gives us the chance to do things worldwide. And if we can if we can make a difference in various different countries it ends up making a difference worldwide you've just got to look at what's happening in new zealand now and the effect that that's going to have on australia and then with those two that's going to spread and it needs this this coordination so yes follow 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 excellent and have you seen the time yes it is 
three and a half minutes past the hour of 10 o'clock. It is, which basically means we're spent. <laughs> Um, we were going to bring you the uh, review of the V God Trick Tank, uh, but you can look forward to that in the next show, can't you? They've had a sneak preview. Next week. They've Funny. had a sneak preview. I've been using it all night. Any good? I love it. There you go. No need to bother tuning in next week. <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, but I'm, I'm a guy that doesn't like rebuildables particularly. I'm still working on the same coils I was using before. No, it's good. Yeah, yeah. You'll see next week. Matt's much better at explaining these things than yeah, I Yeah, and uh, he's had a right good look at it too. So if you're interested in this thing, and I think a lot of people were asking about it, you'll get the full SP here next week. Right, but I think we, we'd probably better go, hadn't we? So uh, um, would, we'll start with Marco. I do feel like we... We, we smother him. <laughs> no, I've, I've been laying back and watching you guys go. You know, we, we just we just wind Dave Don up and off he goes. That's it, the gob on the stick. That's it. <laughs> He's the Jewish, the Jewish cell vapor. Um, <laughs> other, don't, think, uh, don't you think I haven't noticed? <laughs> other copper coloured top batteries are probably available. Um, it used no, to be. It's been, it's, been a, it's been a good show. Um, really enjoyed the, the VTs from India. Um, even though I had to watch them on my phone because obviously I didn't have the VT. <laughs> yeah. Um, only only Dave had the VTs. Um, but yes, interesting stuff. And and again, big thanks to Dick Puddlecoat for uh, for giving those to us. Really appreciate it. And and it's just amazing what's going on over there. Um, given the fact that just about everybody who matters was banned from being there. <laughs> Excellent yes. summary of the day. Excellent synopsis. Right. Last word, Dave. Last word? Uh-huh. Well, you know what? I, listen, folks. You've, that's already more than one. <laughs> you have, well, I've, loads of them. I've got loads of them. <laughs> you, know what, you know what you need to do. You need to talk to your councillors. You need to talk to your MPs. You need to follow in core. You need to vape on. You need to vape hard. And don't let the bastards grind you down. Our friends in India aren't. We shouldn't either. And it's good night from him.